welcome back to Bake, Brew and Blues. We're back in the kitchen. Uh, we're going to be doing some baking with our sourdough starter. If you haven't seen episode one, go back and have a look at that. That'll go through all the information you need to get the sourdough starter going. You'll need about a week to do that. Or if you can steal some from your friend, you can use that. But also episode one goes through how to use it for a standard sourdough loaf of bread. We're not going to be using it for a standard bread or a loaf today. It's Easter coming up, so we're going to take the opportunity to do some sourdough hot cross buns. So we're starting again with our sourdough starter. So this has been in the fridge for a week or so. Um, again, you can sort of see the texture that it's got. Um, it lasts pretty well within a week. If you're baking every day, you can leave that on the bench and just feed it every day. In this case, I use it once or twice a week, so I just leave it in the fridge and it's fine. So we start with about half the starter, which equates to about 280 grams of starter. And then, just before I forget, we need to refeed our starter. So there's 150 grams of flour and about 150 mils of water. That just gets a light stir through. That's fed the starter now, so that'll be happy. Once I've stirred that through, that can be just covered with cling wrap. And in this case, put back in the fridge and it'll be fine for another week. And that's about all you need to do. It's not really that greatly stirred through, but the sourdough yeast will get through all that when it's ready. Alright, so we have our sourdough starter. So we're going to add 600 grams of flour in this case. This is pretty much a standard hot cross bun recipe. All we're really doing is replacing the dry yeast with our sourdough starter. We've got one cup of milk. In this case, the recipe asks for warm milk. But because we're doing this 24 hours in advance to let the starter do its thing, I'm not really worried whether it's warm or cold. We've got half a cup of water. We've got a quarter of a cup of sugar. We've got a teaspoon full of cinnamon. We've got one egg. We've got 60 grams worth of melted butter and I've got here one cup of mixed fruit. So again the recipe normally calls for sultanas and currants but I use pretty much whatever I've got. If I've got some mixed peel, if I've got some dried apricots, it all works out pretty well. So there's a cup of mixed dried fruit. Now the other ingredient I'll put in if I've got it is I've got some fruit mince from the fridge. So I'm going to put in a nice tablespoon of that as well. I think that adds just a nice little bit more of spice to it and a bit more colour to the mixture. So there are our ingredients. Now again all we need to do is stir this through so it's mixed together. I don't need to worry too much about kneading it very much at the moment. All I want to do is make sure it's mixed through. We then leave it for probably another eight hours or so. So if you're doing this in the morning, you come back to it in the evening. By then you'll be able to knead it a lot easier and we'll show you that. And then I'd come back in the morning, give it one final knead about an hour before we bake it and we'll show you then how to put it all in the tin and make the hot cross buns tomorrow. So you're normally doing this a day in advance if you can. So that's just about there. It's a pretty thick mixture this one but it looks a little bit more like a, a thick cake or a, a pudding mixture. But that's okay. That'll come together well later on in the day. I reckon that's about enough. So, once that's mixed through, 
Again, I'm not worrying about kneading it or anything. That's about all I need to do. All we need to finish off with is just cover that with some cling wrap. And you can just put that aside. As I said, come back later in the day and we'll be able to show you what it's done and what you need to do in terms of working the dough at that point. Okay, so we've come back to the dough now. It's about six hours after we first just mixed it together. So it's starting to hold its shape a little bit and you should be able to just give it a rough knead just by getting it around in a ball, tucking your hand underneath and you can start to see that taking a little bit of shape in the bowl and that's about all we need to do and we'll come back in the morning and give it another knead before we bake. It's the following morning and we've got the dough ready to prepare for baking so you can see that it's risen quite a bit and it's starting to come together with that elastic nature that the sourdough is starting. So what I want to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on the side here. I don't want to overwork this too much. I want to basically do enough so I can get it all out of the tin and onto the board. So in this case we're going to cut this dough up into 16 pieces for our hot cross buns. So this has been about 20 hours since we first put the mixture together and as we've shown you we're not doing a lot of kneading so the sourdough has done a lot of the work for us so all we need to do now is finish it off so all I want to do is just use enough flour so this isn't going to be too sticky so it's quite sticky I just want a bit more flour on the board and then we want to cut this up into 16 roughly even pieces. Don't worry too much if they're not all exactly the same. It just means you end up with different size hot cross buns. So all we need to do now is get some floured hands. And I've got a 24 centimetre square tin. This is perfect size for this recipe. So all we want to do is pick up each piece, give it a rough roll, and put it in the tin. And that is done. So all we do now is get a nice clean tea towel, cover that, probably for an hour or so. So I prefer to leave it about 24 hours between making and baking. Uh, this has been about the 20 hour mark. Uh, so you could leave it for a little bit longer. And then when you do this final knead, I would leave it for about half an hour, an hour, not too much more than that, and it'll be ready for baking. So I'll put that aside. We'll come back in an hour. So the hot cross buns have been resting now for about an hour. So all they've done is just started to joined together a little bit. In the meantime, I got a mixture of about a quarter of a cup of flour, a tablespoon of sugar, and a little bit of water to make a paste. And we're gonna put our crosses on. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. And also, don't worry about it being a perfect look. It's all gonna taste good. Alright, that will do. We've got our crosses. Now before we put it in the oven, I've got the oven on at 200 degrees. I'm going to put a glass of water in a tray in the bottom of the oven. That'll just help create some steam and help the sourdough start up rise a little bit. So we'll put that in. And then our buns in and we're going to cook that for 10 minutes 
on about 200 degrees Celsius and we'll then put that down to about 180 for another 15 minutes or so and that should be done but just cook them until they're nice and brown so the hot cross buns have been in the oven now around 25 to 30 minutes so it's going to depend on the oven a little bit but you can see that they're nice and brown on top you can see that they're starting to crack away a little bit so they cook quite nicely i normally leave that in the tin for about five minutes or so and uh, that'll just soften the size before we take it out all right so after five minutes it's been resting just make sure it's not sticking to the sides so we can get that out a bit easier Finish it off. I've just got a tablespoon full of uh, apricot jam. Just heat it up in the microwave for 30 seconds or so, so it's melted, or bubbling away. And then we're just going to run a glaze over the top here. to cool a little bit because they're going to be still pretty warm but we're not going to wait are we let's see what they're like so we'll peel one off here so you can see that it's nice light fluffy hot 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 lovely smell of the fruit and cinnamon a little bit of the sourdough have it with butter, with jam, I like it with raspberry jam, um, apricot jam would go well as well, mm, nice, soft, the top will be crispy, and the soft bottom, crispy, nice and soft, dough inside, that's a lovely flavour, there they are, hot cross buns, so enjoy them while they're warm, they're meant to be eaten on the day, otherwise zap them in the microwave, but have a great Easter, happy baking, great brewing, keep enjoying the blues. On our track for the way out tonight, we're going to have a tribute to Eric Clapton after playing Robert Johnson last time at the Crossroads. We're going to go out with some cl classic Eric Clapton. We'll see you next time. Bye.